hand him out of the way so I don't step on him. It's pretty easy to see ourselves in today's gospel reading. We're all eager disciples. And, and think about the disciple in today's reading. He was very eager. He ran to Jesus, so the matter was urgent. He knelt in front of him, so he showed respect. He called him a good teacher, so he saw Jesus as an important spiritual guide. And he was loved by Jesus. He also believed that he had been very faithful, that he had done all the things he needed to do in life in order to achieve that goal of the kingdom of God. So unlike the Pharisees, who we talk about a lot, he wasn't trying to trick Jesus. He wasn't trying to get him in a gotcha moment. This was truly a disciple. This was someone who wanted the spiritual direction from Jesus. Yeah, it's easy to see ourselves in that eager disciple. We're believers, we show respect, and hopefully for our neighbors and for all of God's creation as well as for Jesus himself. And we all want that goal, that goal of eternal life. It's almost like we have an eternal life reward card. And every time we do a good deed, it gets a little punch in it. And at the end of our life, we show that punch card to God and we get into the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that how it works? No, it does not work that way. That's backward. Eternal life is a gift from God. It's not something that we earn. It's freely given. It's not something we deserve. It's not something we earn points for by being good people. It's not a test. If we treat eternal life like it's a test in high school, then I think that we're going to end up like the disciple and we're going to end up walking away in sadness. So it all depends on where your arrow points why I have a prop today. So do you notice what Jesus pointed to? The Gospel of Mark is full of Jesus pointing toward God. Now, I know that God's not up there, that God is everywhere, but I'm just going to use that as our metaphor today. The Gospel of Mark always points toward God. Jesus is always saying, I'm, I'm not God. You need to look toward God. Of course, we know that Jesus is divine, but the point is it's always look beyond yourself. But for me, and I think for a lot of us, we often point the arrow like this. We focus on ourselves and we focus on our needs. Now, of course, we can all find God inside ourselves. Actually, that's a a key tenant of why we gather together. But I think when we point our arrow towards ourselves, we're often pointing it not to find God in ourselves, but in maybe a slightly different way. The disciple in today's gospel is not focused on the essential goodness of God, but on rather his personal achievements. That's back to this idea that Whoever one of us is the best at the end, we get the biggest reward. And and that is absolutely backward. That's not how God works. So in a world where we've been trained from our very birth to be independent, what the gospel tells us today is to be dependent. And that's not in our nature. That's not how we typically want to do things. We want to achieve salvation. We can't do that because it's not possible for us, even though all things are possible for God. Now, sometimes our arrow doesn't point at us, but it points at our material possessions. I don't know what that would be. And that's another issue that we have to be concerned about because the camel in the eye of the needle, that's a bit of a touchy thing to talk about in a neighborhood, in a world where we are definitely wealthy by nearly any standard, we are at the upper end of wealth of people around the world. And I don't want to soft pedal the message in today's gospel, but it seems that focusing solely on our possessions runs into a problem on selling our possessions. And John Shea calls it this. He calls it, even if your idea is you're going to sell all your possessions, you're still focused on the wrong thing. You're focused on an allegiance to owning and accumulating. 
It's a style of living that says the more you get, the happier you are. And I can tell you that is absolutely not the way it really works. Ask somebody who has achieved incredible wealth if all of that money made them happy and and they're going to tell you no because that's not how it works. A bigger house, a newer car, or for me, a faster computer is not going to make me into a happier person. So Jesus says to let go. And that is a very hard thing to do. Have you ever heard the story of the monkey trap? So this may be an apocryphal story. I don't know if it's really true, but it's a great analogy for what I'm talking about today. So this is how it goes. You take a bottle or a basket with a narrow top, and it gets wider at the bottom. And you find a succulent orange that just fits into the neck of that bottle. You put it in the bottle and you strap it down on the floor so that it can't get moved. A spider monkey will come along. It will smell that succulent orange and it will reach its hand into the trap, put its hand around that orange, but now it can't get the orange out. It can't get both the orange and its hand out of that trap. And theoretically, that means a hunter can come along with a net, walk right up to that monkey and capture it because the monkey won't let go of the prize. It sees that orange, it smells that orange, it wants that orange, even though it sees the danger of the hunter, it can't let go. I think that's a great analogy for our world and many of the things that we think we need in order to live. That if we get trapped by them, if we simply can't let go, then we end up like the monkey in the hunter's net. Even when we know we need to change our behavior, it's a very difficult thing to do. Before you know it, all of your goods are strapped to your camel and you can't get through the eye of the needle. But Jesus offers us the answer. Jesus says, point your arrow at God. Don't point it at yourself. Don't point it at your possessions. But if you focus on the kingdom, if you focus on finding good in others, at using what you have, the gifts that God has given you to make the world a better place, then you've done the right thing. Because for us, it's not possible to get into the kingdom. But for God, for God, everything is possible. Mm